Bobby, it's amazing to see you after what feels like 20 years, I think. I know, it's been a long, <laughs> long time. <laughs> it's been too long. You know, my memory of you, Bobby, is the shoot or in Rawal Sar of Kareem. I still remember the Karma Chaud night. <laughs> Me and Tanya yeah. trying to figure out how to do Karmachot. We had all just gotten married, me and Vinod, you and Tanya. And I remember you in that, dipping into that dirty lake. The magic uh, hours. The, during the magic hours. Yeah. But listen, I have to say, you look as good right now as you did all those years ago. What has happened? I guess uh, uh, the way my life moved on, my career moved on, uh, I wasn't working for four years and uh, things were not falling in the right place and I w would wonder why. But Tanya, my wife, would keep saying, you have to look after yourself, look at you, how you're looking. I said, what do you mean how I'm looking? I'm looking fine, you know. But I was, I was, see, when I started my career, I was from a traditional way of working in cinema, you know. And when I came into the industry, it was changing. So I was so used to work coming to me then instead of me going and asking for work. And then things just slowed down because I didn't do that and others would take the same roles which I would have got, I didn't realize that. And slowly, slowly everything slowed down for me, you know, and then I was low in my life, I didn't care about things about myself and I s suddenly started to just lose it all, you know, and you don't realize it till one day it just dawns on you and you understand it yourself. No one can keep telling you that, you know, you're wrong or you you have to realize it yourself. And then when my kids started growing up, I started looking at them and I looked at them and I kept thinking that the father sits at home all the time. But then I didn't realize that social media has become so big and strong that whatever it says, people start believing that. So people were talking about me as if, oh, he's happy, he doesn't need to work, he has a lot of money, why would he want to work, he's lazy, things like that. So I like, how do I fight this? How do I make people understand that I need to work. I look at my kids, I want to work. I want to work for them. I want to keep working every day of my life and I want to do what I can the best, like how my father did for me, I want to do it for my kids. So that suddenly made me realize and I started looking after myself. And, uh, and I wanted to be prepared because work can come knocking on your door anytime, you know. And in these last two, three years, I went and met people. I went out to whoever I thought I could meet. You know, because it's very difficult to break that, that whole system you've been following and going up to people to ask for work. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, it is hard because everybody looks at me, aapko kya kaam chahiye? Ha ha ha, sochenge, sochenge. Because everybody thought of me as a star who's doing so well and then, you know, he's not working. So finally, all those people I met, it worked. You know, like Salman, for instance. I mean, uh, I have never met someone like him in my life who's an outsider, yet he treats me like a family member, you know. I remember I used to play cricket. I love cricket. Even when we were shooting for Kareem, we used to play so much cricket. And uh, I started playing CCL and I used to bump into Salman. Not that I didn't know Salman for many years back, but it's just that you don't meet everybody in your industry every day. So when I bumped into him, he said, Kya kar rahe? Dari ugali tune. Because I was trying to think of, I was thinking of doing offbeat films because as it is my, no one expected anything out of me. So I thought might as well take an advantage and take the advantage and do something which I really want to do, you know, because people always thought of me as a commercial actor. They never see me doing an offbeat film. But that didn't work. Only thing I grew a beard like Ramdev Baba. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I wanted, I wasn't bothered about how I looked at that point. I just wanted to play the character. And then Salman told me like, when my career was going on, I fell on your brother's head, Sanjay Dutt's head. So I said, then Mamu, I call him Mamu. I said, Mamu, give me your brother's head. You know, give me work. You call him Mamu? Yeah. I call him Mamu since forever. He calls me Mamu. It's just a thing we have. So you said, Mamu, give me your brother's head. So he said, no, no, definitely. You shave this head. And then eventually he thought of, he keeps it in mind, you know. He remembers everything. And he did try to work something out for me. And that didn't work out. And uh, then finally, I did Poster Boys. And I was very excited. Because here again, I was playing a role which no one expected me to be a, to play. It was a school teacher from a small town. The last time I played small town boy was in Karib. And, uh, you know, I really enjoyed doing that film. Every schedule of that film 
of uh, curry was a memory and a beautiful memory. And uh, so when I got a chance to do this again, I was really excited. And Shriyas, being an actor, director, for the first time directing, it was great fun working with him because we used to do workshops. I think the first time I ever did workshops was with Vinod. Every evening, we used to sit and go through scenes. And really works, you know, it really helps. So we did a lot of hard work, worked through all the lines because I had to speak in Shud Hindi. And uh, the film didn't do so well at box office. But people called and appreciated my work. And that gave me more energy because I said, it doesn't matter. At least people have started noticing me again and started appreciating my work. So then, I mean, I just got Yamla Pagla 3, you know, and I was really happy again working with my dad and brother. But I wanted to get out of that whole thing that I'm working with my brother and my dad always. Because people think, start thinking of the new term they started using nowadays. Nepotism. Yes, which I didn't understand what it meant first. It was like when I started my career, I didn't know what genre, genre, what genre. Genre, yeah. I said, what is genre? Kya hai? You know, this film is not going to be genre. What is genre? Kya hota hai? <laughs> so this was another word which came in my life. And then when I understood what it meant, and then I realized, no, it's not like that. You know, it's just that when you don't have work, who else will work with you? You apne kaam karenge. Yeah. So then, while that was happening, I started working out a lot. In fact, I was working out with Prashant, who used to train, who's a, known as a Shah Rukh's trainer. And then suddenly one day I get a phone call, and Salman on the phone. I'm like, Salman calling me. So I said, ha, Mamu. He says, uh, sure, you'll get <laughs> no, because you know what happened? Because uh, I remember when I did Soldier with uh, Ramesh Ji, they wanted me to go shirtless. I said, why should I go shirtless? You know, you know I don't understand the logic behind it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. a very shy person. Yeah. So I guess they must have discussed and they must, Ramesh Ji must have told Salman that Bobby nahi shirt nahi utarega. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he really wanted me for the film, Salman. So I said, Mamu, I'll do anything. So he said, come tomorrow and hear the script. And that's how House, uh, I mean, Race 3 happened. And one and a half years back, I had met Sajid also. Sajid Nadiarwala. And, uh, you know, the strange story about me and Sajid is that all the years back, he wanted to work with me and somehow it never happened. And then, that time he used to come. And this time I went and met him. But it doesn't make a difference to me anymore. And he still remembers that. And I said, look, now I'm coming to you. Please give me work, you know. So that's how Houseful 4 happened, you know, and uh, people started noticing that I'm changing, I'm more positive, I'm, I have sudden this energy in me, which I always had, but I just didn't know how to portray it, you know, so I'm just happy, everything is falling in place, and I only see good things happening, and even if good things don't happen, I'm not going to give up this time. I'm just going to keep at it and see to it that I work every day of my life. But Bobby, did you give up earlier? I kind of did, yeah. because... You don't really give up. You just start neglecting yourself. You just let go. Yeah. And uh, you start fighting with, in your mind, fighting against things which you start believing in. And suddenly you realize, what are you doing all these years? You know, no one is not you. You have to do something, you have to do know, No matter how strong a family you have, they give you the strength to exist. But to work and to move forward in life, you have to do it on your own. You know, how much can they give you that support? Yeah. In fact, by working hard and doing your best, you give them support. Not financially, but just that mental happiness. Everybody's happy around you then, you know. Because the family sees the face every day and says, Why are you so angry? I said, no, I'm fine. No, you're stuck. I'm like, you know, living in a joint family, how do you even hide your emotions? <laughs> you can't. Yeah. So, I'm blessed with a great family and uh, I'm just blessed that people love my family so much and they want me to come back, you know. Everybody in the industry wants me to come back. And that's so nice to see and to hear. Bobby, when you were at the bottom of this dip, you know, you said you almost became an alcoholic and you talked to directors and producers and many of them said that yes, we will do something, but they did. At that point, how did you actually keep faith? How did you get up and sort of move again? I told, I mean, as I said, my family, my kids. I, it's the kids? Yeah, it's my kids. I wanted to, I wanted them to see their father in his best. You know, I wanted them to not look at him and say, he's a loser or he's, give, he's given up, you know. I wanted to be their inspiration as my father is to me. 
and that's the most important thing for me and my wife who believes so much in me she did <laughs> yeah she just kept kept your spirits up yeah i guess i know you so well i mean in a way i just getting a little emotional <laughs> can you just pause yeah we'll pause it's okay yeah. it's okay Bobby, you said uh, in an interview that all actors today are commodities and we need to sell ourselves. Do you see that as a good thing or a bad thing? I don't see as a choice in that because you have to make people want to see you on screen. And for that, you have to really work hard and take care of yourself. I guess nowadays it's become a full package thing. An actor has to not just be an actor. He has to dance. He has to have a great physique. He has to do all those things. Earlier on, it was an actor. so that's why you have to make yourself be attractive so that people want to see you you know and you have to move like that with times you know so that's why i'm i mean i'm not trying to i'm just trying to live a healthy lifestyle basically and that's all you need to do i mean what's the most be honest be true and be healthy you know because if you're not healthy it's no point being honest and true what will you do with that <laughs> <laughs> in terms of roles bobby what would you like to do as i said good characters good subjects make a good character you know so i'm just looking if i get something like that i mean main lead why not but it doesn't mean it's just main lead you know i just want to work with people who are honest and dedicated and uh, there are a lot of kids now there's new new kids there's so many people who are doing some great work i would like to work with them i would like to work with people who are already there in the industry and i am going to go out and meet all of them and ask for work and i will do that <laughs> that's you know that's amazing and that's very admirable i don't know why there should be any embarrassment there is no embarrassment yeah, anymore why should there be i was just shy i i i i was uh, i don't know i just don't know why i didn't do all these things before you know there were so many people i wanted to work with and i thought they'll work with me you know but it doesn't happen that way yeah. cuz i know them it doesn't happen that way you have to keep going out there and telling them and probably would you be open to roles that are not heroic necessarily because there's a lot of movies now being made that are not about the traditional sort of heroes and villains no definitely i mean it's just uh, it's the new new world new new way of thinking so there are a lot of subjects which have been written like that i'm open to all that and uh, all the experience in my life helps me now as an actor yeah you know so i'm open to all that and uh, it's going to be fun i'm just hoping you know because the sad part is he in even till date even now this one thing hasn't changed about an actor is that once you have an image you can't break that you try so hard you know there are a lot of films that are made with big actors which are not mainstream they don't work but if you make the same film with not such a big actor who's not that commercial actor it works you notice that yeah, as well yeah. and that's a sad thing because as an actor you want to do so much work you know you want to do different kinds of films but it doesn't happen so right now all the films i'm doing are on the commercial space you know and but you're open to i'm absolutely anything open to absolutely anything as long as i believe in it yeah you know i can't be a part of a film where i don't believe in it just because i have to do a different kind of film right you know mommy what about when you were this massive star like what was it like to yeah. shoot movies then was I, it crazy you know i never thought of myself like that no? i honestly didn't i never realized what level i had reached as a star nothing you were just oblivious i just i honestly i i mean no one believes when i say that because i never i just wanted to work you know i didn't want to i want people to love me as much as they love my father and i would see that happening it was not like as if you know in I just didn't ever realize that, you know. Maybe I should have realized that. Maybe I would have worked harder. You know? I just didn't realize it. But it's never too late. No. And do you feel Bobby that you're a better actor today? I'm definitely more experienced in life, so it makes you a better actor. It uh definitely does. Like my when I was younger, my my brother always said, "Don't worry, you know, you younger so you have you don't understand things so that's fine but when you have more experience you start realizing and that's what happens and in your house what is it like with you now sort of 
gearing up for this great second innings and your nephew Karan is being launched? I know, I'm very excited. He's like my son. I mean, though, you know how it is when you reach that age, you start staying away from the elders. <laughs> Yeah. All the kids do that. Of course. So he's always avoid, you know, they always avoid the elders. And I'm like, dude, I'm a cool uncle, cool cha-cha. Just come to me. Tell tell me anything you want. But they're still scared of me. I don't know why. I said, I'm not like your dad, you know. Right. Your dad used to be like, when I was, when my parents used to not be at home, I'm like, great, I can go out now. So he sees my brother. Where are you going? I said, I'm going out. No, you can't go out. I said, why? Why can't I go out? I said, you can't go out. I'm like, and I was scared of him. So I should no, not no. go out. So I'm like... <laughs> he was quiet but very intimidating. Yeah. Very intimidating. I'm like, I, now I tell him, I said, why did you ever stop me from going out? <laughs> because he didn't like going out. He didn't understand what it was about going out. Right, right. So, I mean, it's just... I just... I mean, just... My brother's totally into that film. And uh, he's totally... It's like... I don't interfere with it because, you know, it is, it's his... It's his son. It's his John. Yeah. And I don't want to give suggestions because... It confuses a person. So I just wanted him to believe in what he's doing and he's really at it. And I just, and I'm so sure because when I worked with him in Dil Lagi, when he directed me for the first time, when he directed for the first time, I think that was one of my best performances. And uh, he'll get the best out of Karan. So, fingers crossed. So it's all, it's all good. It's all good. It's <laughs> wonderful to hear, Bobby. All best. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. So, much. you. It was so nice meeting you after so long. <laughs> it was, really. See, see, I guess I just felt I was sitting with you and not doing an interview and. I got a little carried away. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. No, Thank serious. you. Thank you. <laughs> if you like this video, subscribe to Film Companion. For more content like this, log in to filmcompanion.in.